obviously thermals are caused by the sun hitting the ground, warming the ground up, but some bits of ground are a little bit better at generating uh, energy from the sun than others. Uh, and then some things help to get the air started. It's like a field can get nice and warm, uh, warm up the air, but sometimes it needs a little help to get that air started. So that's what the tree lines, hills, buildings, if there's any breeze at all and uh, warm air that's near the ground hasn't quite figured out that it wants to go and then hits an obstacle and the air goes over the obstacle. That once that air comes up a little bit, it figures out that it's a lot warmer than the air around it and there goes the thermal, it starts the thermal. So that's why you find thermals around obstacles. So you end up hunting down tree lines, buildings, anything that helps to start the thermal. Uh, it's obvious you guys are probably quite experienced at this. Uh, uh, dry ground is very good at generating thermals. Uh, irrigated crops, not so good. Uh, something that you guys probably don't play with so much in Israel is when there's a forest, it's, it pretty much sucks in the morning, midday, in the late evening. A forest actually uh, absorbs and retains the heat, whereas the ground just radiates off the heat in the evening. So in the late afternoon and evening, the, that forest actually went, goes from the place you don't want to be to that's where the last thermals of the day are coming from. So, and one thing, if you guys ever have any questions, feel free to interrupt. I don't like hearing myself, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, another thing that, the, at least in this area, you probably don't run, run into too much is the influence of mountains and valleys uh, in the, uh, in the you know, late afternoon and evening, the first thing to cool down is the mountainside and the cool air will start flowing down the mountainside into a valley. That, that's what's called catabatic air movement. Uh, the, the inverse is in the, in the morning that when the sun's shining on the mountains and the valley, all that cool air, cool air is pulled into the valley floor and the sun will heat up the mountainside and the air around the mountains first. So you get this layer of warm air running up the mountains. That's called anabatic, anabatic uh, air movement. So the mountains heat up uh, first thing in the morning and cool down quickest. So you get uh, in the morning, air is rushing up the mountains and the cold air in the valleys just you know, slowly getting pulled out to the mountain edges. So the thermals are latest to really get going in the valley. And first thing is over the hills and mountains around. So when you're when you're uh, out there in the field, the first thing you do is look at where, what's the altitude around you. And for the early morning flights, you want to go try and put the thermals up over or downwind of the highest uh, uh, terrain in the area. And of course, water is generally not a good thing for thermals. It's a, <clears throat> a downwind of a lake, uh, kind of bodies of water can influence uh, thermals for quite a ways and you have to look at uh, what's upwind of you. The first thing I do when I go to a new flying field, and, well before I go, the first thing I'll do nowadays is Google Earth and go look at what's around the flying field and look at, okay, where's towns nearby, good concrete and asphalt, and good thermal sources. And there might be a, you know, a settlement that's a mile and a half upwind of the field, and that would be the most likely place to look at is you want to <clears throat> fly so you're downwind of the settlement because the thermals aren't just over the, uh, over the settlement, but that air will get gotten warmed up by the, about, uh, the village and might actually not get going for a mile or two downwind, but there'll be a... a uh, a corridor of lift downwind of a good thermal source. So always understand <coughs> the geographic uh, terrain around a flying field. And people think, yeah, I want to go fly over the parking lot. And reality is, <coughs> if 
your little air molecule, you, you track it going over the parking lot, and it starts getting warmed up over the, you know, the asphalt, and then might even start as a thermal over the parking lot, and then keeps drifting downwind, and then it starts going up, and you, you finally realize that <clears throat> that little air molecule got heated up by the parking lot. By the time it's 100 meters up, might be 500 meters or even 1,000 meters downwind of the parking lot. So the thermal <clears throat> that is started by the parking lot isn't over the parking lot, but quite a ways downwind. And <clears throat> if people don't understand just how far downwind that influence it, uh, it occurs. Now you can touch. What about greenhouses? Greenhouses. That's an interesting question. <laughs> I'd actually have to think about uh, how the uh, heat gets translated because, of course, greenhouses get quite warm, but that's because they're insulating what's inside from the outside, so you're not getting as much heat transfer out. So the greenhouses might actually act a little bit like forest to some degree. So, in the late afternoon, they're storing the heat, not letting the heat go, so a greenhouse might be a good source in the afternoon. But that's, uh, that's a hypothesis you'd have to test it. <laughs> so I've already talked a little bit about this. Uh, the, the obvious one is you, you look for anything that uh, becomes an obstruction to the air so that when the air is moving along and hits something, it starts it up and uh, for uh, those of us that fly F3K, you can sit on a tree line and go back and forth and you get a little bit of slope lift, not much, because trees are kind of porous, but if, uh, you can sit there and take little bubbles and, and if, if, if the air is really not ready to be a real thermal, that bubble that starts off a tree line might decay and break off uh, 100 meters downwind. So you take the bubble, do a few circles, it breaks up, you come back to the tree line, take the next bubble, and it might be one out of three or one out of four bubbles that actually goes and becomes a real thermal. But the tree line allows you to take that bubble, come back, take that bubble, come back, and then, yeah, that one's good. But uh, as compared to anywhere else in the field, it's so much easier to uh, work in obstruction. No, that, that's only if you have a strong wing. If you have a very light wing, you, you won't get any lift. Well, you won't get slope lift, but uh, what's like what we were doing today at the uh, uh, the field we we're flying at that that little hill downwind with the greenhouses still was kicking off thermals, so it was more likely to go down. Now, if if you're doing a full power throw, you're probably twice as likely to find something back there than you were just going upwind. Um. Specifically over there, there are a lot of uh, vents, so uh, they, they they move the air a lot. I mean, in that specific place. Well, just up one of the the trees there was okay. a good generation area. So, uh, it, you know, <clears throat> I, I tend to look for uh, any obstruction as a uh, opportunity. And then I talked a little. Oh, next year. I already talked a little bit about all this uh, uh, forest, big patches of shrubs and so on. Morning is typically uh, horrible because uh, the air stays cold. And then in the late evening, it, you can well, you can even feel it when you're walking around in, in the evening and, and the, the dry terrain is nice and cool because the air is the heat's radiated off, you walk into a forest, and it feels warm. And so you can use that to uh, help out. Irrigated cropland, uh, all the energy that's coming down from the sun is going into evaporation rather than uh, uh, heating up air, so poor source. Uh, <clears throat> Talk a little bit about asphalt or parking lots. Uh, that heats up early in the morning, holds heat in the evening, so it's still got good radiation. And well, you guys understand plow fields and dry dry terrain very well here. So <clears throat> the, the big one is bodies of water. That the cold air that the, on the water 
actually flows out over the terrain nearby, so it ends up dampening thermals for a long ways around. Uh, it can be sometimes a mile from the lake and, and no wind, uh, and it just kills the thermals off. So, I thought that the difference in temperature might cause all thermals to uh, up, up earlier because you may get um, more uh, a difference even if the total energy is in high. Or it'll make something that quite low, but uh, I, one of the classic uh, ones for me is uh, we used to fly cross country in California around a, uh, uh, a lake. And as you got close to the lake, you, know, you listen to the vario as you're flying along, it's like you know, active air, and then you get close to the lake, and <clears throat> air just goes flat near the lake. Uh, but that's at, that's at altitude, a couple thousand feet. So maybe near the ground, there might be little bubbles, but the, due to the air being overall cooler, those little bubbles will run into the warmer air around near the lake, so nothing happens above.